Hey, beautiful people. I know it's been a while and I pray that all of you are well. Have you heard the quote, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything? I'm sure you have. I mean, it's been quoted and requoted by many well-known people. Um, but what do you stand for? Something? Nothing? Anything? And um, how do you see yourself taking a stand in your situation, um, in your circumstance and in your life? Now, in order to stand for something, there must be a standard lifted in which we live by. And if you're a believer, that standard should be God's standard. It is not our own, but his, his purpose and his will for our lives. Now, y'all know we live in a world that can be very discouraging. I mean, there is a lot of crazy and a lot of evil out there. Just turn on the news. Evil and crazy is all you see. I mean, rarely do you see any good news. Um, even recently with the uh, Trayvon Martin case, you know, people are outraged over the murder of what appears to be an innocent teenager with his whole life of ahead of him, gunned down by an overzealous neighborhood watchman. Folks have rallied together in, in marches across the nation, speaking out against the issue, feeling moved and compelled to take a stand against injustice. You know, we hear stories like this all the time. And while there are um, some things outside of our direct control, the way that we choose to individually stand and fight um, against evil and unrighteousness is within our control. But how do we stand in the spirit? You know, how do we equip ourselves to deal with the evil in the world, the challenges of our circumstances and our situations? How do we push through um, when things get hard? And how do we remain courageous and gain the victory? Well, Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh or blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The whole armor of God is the word of God, and our faith and our obedience to the word will equip us for life's challenges and to stand against evil and unrighteousness. When you're facing trouble, which are you feeding them You know, more? Are you feeding your flesh or are you feeding your spirit? I mean, when things get tough, what is your reaction? What do you do? And where do you go? And how do you deal? You know, um, do you exude love and peace or are you quick to cut somebody out? You know, do you let anger build up inside of you or do you go straight to God in prayer? Do you go to the club looking for a quick fix or do you go to the house of God seeking a good word with whatever you may be going through? If you desire for God to lead you and guide you or pull you through it, you'll need to humble yourself before him and ask the questions. Am I living right? You know, am I accountable for my actions and are they lining up with the standard? Am I pleasing God with my life or do I still try to do things my own way? Or do I take out of the word only the things that make me feel good, you know, the prosperity and the love and the joy, you know, and neglect the things, the part parts of the truth that deals with my sin, which isn't so comfortable. All right. Now, you know, if you've asked yourself these questions and you realize, you know, how far left you are, don't get discouraged. OK, rather be encouraged because change starts with being able to recognize, confess and accept where you are in order to move forward and on to the next level of your life. You know, trust me, there's been plenty of times, you know, uh, mostly in my past where I get before God and I realize, man, I'm off. You know, I'm not really living this thing, you know. And however, in each moment um, of revelation, I get encouraged to know and or to always work at getting it right because that's my heart, you know, and my heart wants to do what's right, even if my flesh, even when my flesh may be screaming something else. Um, we all are a work in progress, but as we continue to grow, there are certain things that we, we shouldn't struggle with anymore um, after a while. You know, there are certain battles that you won't have to fight anymore because you're stronger and you're wiser. Um, just as you grow from a child to a man or a woman in the natural should be how you should grow in the spirit, going from strength to strength, faith to faith and glory to glory. It's not always easy to live right. Um, 
when there are so many things that are appealing to and tempting to the flesh and it it can be especially hard to live right when you're actually living right and you see the the wicked prospering and it appears they're getting away with their sin but remember what what did Jesus tell Peter Peter was so concerned about John and what he was doing and um he asked but Lord what about this man and Jesus responds if I will that he remain till I come. What is that to you? You follow me. You know, don't be concerned with what others are doing or what it looks like other people are getting away with. Keep yourself in right standing with God because we all will have to stand before him one day. And the excuse, well, what about this this man or what about that woman? It won't cut it. You know, God will give to each person according to what he has done. And we all are accountable. If you say you're a Christian, you're literally representing Christ with your life. You know, our lives are not our own. Um, and what we do with our lives, it matters to God. We shouldn't be living just any kind of way. Now, I'm, say I'm not saying that um, you or I won't ever fall into sin or temptation, but we don't have to let sin have dominion over us. You can make the choice not to practice sin, but rather righteousness. I mean, obviously, we're going to need God to help us through it and to mold us and make us, you know. And believe it or not, our actions are not only important for us as individuals, but for others as well. Just when you don't think um, people are watching, they are, you know? And I'm not saying you should be living your life for other people. Um, you live your life for God. Um, but part of living a, a godly life is being mindful of how you represent him with your life. Because a lot of times your actions can either lead people to Christ or it can confuse them and, you know, drive them further away. I look back at my own um walk especially in the beginning where it felt like I stumbled more than I stood and you know that was all part of me learning God's way um but I realized where I could have turned someone away from God and I probably did you know um by being careless and being reckless and lukewarm in my walk saying I was a Christian but my actions stood for something else it didn't stand for God you know I had to ask God for forgiveness because it damages the kingdom when we don't represent him right and if we don't grow, and if we stay stuck as a babe in the spirit, it can be damaging to the kingdom too. Maturing in Christ is necessary, and it's a process. You know, we need to make the effort um, to be fed with the word on a consistent basis. We need to keep prayers lifted. We need to fast when necessary. We need to trust and obey the word and allow God to manifest himself in, you know, our lives um, so it can lead others to him. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, people will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Also, watch the company you keep as you mature in Christ. Be careful who you let in your ear. It's, it's hard to try to live right when you got all the wrong folk, you know what I'm saying, right here, speaking into your ear, influencing your decisions, especially if you know that they're not living right. Follow God and he'll place the right people in your life that will bless you and be beneficial to your purpose. You know, I know for me, I don't need friends who live for the world concerned only in the vanity of things, which will pass away. But friends who live for God, you know, I need friends who will hold me accountable, who even though I may not always agree with, can speak to me in truth and love. You know, I need friends who won't let me live in mess, but who will care enough about my well-being to say something to me. You know, if you got people around you who speak ill of you, who um, don't have your best interest at heart, um, and friends who say you're, they're your friends, but they don't encourage you to do what's right, get rid of them. These people are not your friends. OK, folks like this will actually keep you from your destiny. And I understand it can be hard to let some people go. You know, I've experienced this firsthand. I've had to distance myself from friends, um, certain friends, because they were a reflection of me. And what's that that saying? Birds of a feather flock together. Well, it's pretty true, you know, because the company you keep can be a reflection of who you are um, or where you are in your life. Now, you know, I've also had people speak ill of me, even within my own family, which is why. I knew for, knew, knew for me, like, I need God and I need to be equipped, you know, because when a man's ways are pleasing to God, he will make even his enemies be at peace with him. If you've got enemies, get more obedient. You know, God will hang under them and the quality of your life will increase. 
I challenge you to live up to the standard. God isn't okay with us living beneath his standards. He isn't okay with us consumed in sin. He despises sin. I mean, he isn't okay with us living in unforgiveness and doubt and fear and hate. You know, he sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins and set the standard. I mean, Christ took all sin in his death on the cross so that we have a chance through him to live the life that God has called us to live. We have the chance and the choice to not let sin have dominion over us. Christ took our sin upon himself. He paved the way. He set the example. He became the standard so that we may have salvation. That is huge, y'all. I mean, you can stand against sin. You don't have to practice, practice sin. You can live a life outside of sin where you're not a sinner. You know, you can work at righteousness, at being better and doing better every day. Now, it's not easy to stand um, and take a stand and live for God. But to fight in this world, in this world, you'll need to remain under God's good grace and covering. You know, you'll need to use the spiritual weapons of truth, of wisdom, of righteousness, um, of fasting, of prayer, of tithing, um, of good works. You know, all these things help you fight the good fight and stand strong in, in these evil days. Be encouraged to know that, yeah, you know, we we'll all go, we all go through things, you know, and we're all gonna face trouble, but if trouble comes, it is only temporary. You know, look at your trouble in the face and say, my trouble is productive, it is working for me. Seek God through it, and at the end of your trouble, there will be more glory in your life. There is a level of peace and contentment you can only get when you're in right standing with God. And the opposite, there are some things that won't break off of you, or, you know, things that you won't receive until you decide to live right and stand for Christ. You know, we all face hardships and ridicule and fear and even hate from people all around us and even those closest to us. But if you stand for Christ, your strength will be renewed and you shall mount up with wings like eagles and you shall run and not be weary and you shall walk and not faint. Follow God. And you'll be strong enough to overcome and gain the victory when folks judge you, when they have the wrong opinion of you, even when they oppose you. Let the Lord strengthen you to stand stronger than ever before, even if it means facing hardship. You'll go a lot further with God. Stay encouraged, y'all, and be blessed.